Well, good afternoon, everybody. I hope you enjoy your parmesan. And uh, I'm going to try and entertain you for a few minutes by talking about adherence and the potential value of an interactive monitoring service in order to improve that. The next slide shows you a quotation that I made and essentially it says that adherence is a very important issue and non-adherence to therapy is very common and it is a complex problem and we do have to do something about it. Now the reason I got into this arena was because I'm a cardiac electrophysiologist and I use antiarrhythmic drugs. And antiarrhythmic drug dosing, particularly for class one antiarrhythmic agents, is very precise. Patients must take drugs eight hourly, they must take them 12 hourly or whatever the regimen is, and they can't afford to miss out on doses. So that was my entry into this particular arena. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Can you all hear me? Uh, there are some terms used in this particular form of medicine or area of medicine which are very confusing. I think you'll all have heard of the term compliance. Compliance means the extent to which a patient acts in accordance with the prescribed interval and the dose of the dosing regimen. Now the word compliance puts the onus on the patient. Does he or she comply with what is happening? Now there's another word, persistence, and persistence means does the patient continue to take the medicine as prescribed? Does he take a full course of the medicine? Does he stop it only when he's supposed to stop it? Again, the term persistence puts the emphasis on the patient. There are other terms that are now being introduced into the literature which emphasize that compliance or adherence to therapy is a mutual arrangement between the doctor and the patient. In other words, it is a contract between doctor and patient. And for that reason, the term adherence is used or concordance. Now, these are all terms that mean roughly the same thing but they are importantly different because it emphasizes the new terminology that not only your patients, but you are also involved in trying to achieve the right dosing for the right length of time. Next slide, please. Now, just some statistics about uh, adherence or non-adherence, because they are quite staggering. For example, in developed countries, adherence in patients with chronic conditions is only 50 percent 50 percent secondly between 11 and 30 percent of hospital admissions in my country result from patients not taking their medications 194,500 deaths per year per year in the european union are attributable to missed doses and to non-adherence. It estimated to cost the EU about 1.25 billion euros a year. And also, as you can see, if you include all the issues related to this, the bill comes to about 4 billion pounds of medicines are not used correctly. So it's a big issue. And just to give you a personal anecdote, in South London, where I work, the pills, the medicines, which are returned to chemists unused by patients. Now, that means that they're actively taking them back, but it's 30 metric tons a year, 30 metric tons of medication not used. Now, 
Who knows what is flushed down the lavatory? Who knows what's left in the bathroom cabinet or in the top drawer? But this medicine's taken back 30 metric tons. So this problem is obviously not just the patient's fault. There are all sorts of important dimensions to it. There are reasons for non-adherent behavior that involve the type of therapy, the patient, the condition that he suffers from, what it costs, whether he can afford it, for example, what kind of social situation the patient is in, and so on. And then there are clearly important entities or associations that influence the patient behavior. For example, the pharmaceutical companies, the employers, the pharmacists, the patients themselves. And then there are various approaches to trying to limit non-adherence, such as, for example, patient reminders, cost-related approaches, patient education, and so on. So there are lots of dimensions to this particular problem. So we have to think about what strategies we can employ. There are multiple players, there are different strategies, but the important goal is simply to develop a good adherence program. And I'll show you now some of the ways in which we might do this. You all know, of course, we're now in a digital age. We're not stuck with just seeing patients or sending nurses to see patients. We can actually uh, correspond with them, we can contact them, uh, we can have various approaches to interact with patients. For example, smart interaction, interventions delivered in a, uh, a, an unobtrusive way and an on-time way. The physicians can be informed about what the patients are doing and the patients can choose their level of participation. And there are these kinds of schemes which are running. For example, telephone calling, text messaging, online communication. And the specific thing that I want to talk about is interactive monitoring. Next slide, please. Now, an interactive monitoring service, such as the one that I'm describing now, is an integrated compliance program. It encourages compliance at each stage of the treatment program and it automatically reminds patients to take their medication and it monitors and records their responses. And it uses a communication system that can incorporate any or all of these kinds of interfaces with the electronic world, predominantly a telephone system. Next slide, please. So the interactive monitoring service that I'm discussing at the moment can be defined by the physician. So it really operates by calling a patient. The patient answers the call, and the system puts it through to an interactive voice response. So it's all automatic. The patient interacts with the voice response system using the phone keyboard. The patient, if the patient doesn't answer, the system reschedules the call according to the prescription that the doctor has agreed. And when the maximum number of calls has been attempted, it then saves all the results on the databases and importantly, it can send a warning message to the physician to say that the patient isn't responding to the interactive monitoring service. Now, does this make any difference? Now, th this particular trial is not a trial with this system precisely, but it's just to show how a few telephone calls can make a major difference. So this trial was called the Easy Impact Trial, and it concerned patients who had been fitted with drug-eluting coronary stents. And as you know, in such circumstances, combined aspirin and, for example, clopidogrel is a common combination therapy, and it's critical that it be continued. And there were two schemes of doing this in this trial, a standard of care, nothing special, just prescribe the medicine, expect the patient to take it, or telephone the patient for calls, for example, from a registered nurse, just as uh, at seven days, one month, six months, and nine months. Now this made a 
difference to adherence, as you can see here, this is the interventional approach, 99 versus 90 percent, and it made a major difference to the persistence with the therapy. So if the patient was called just four times, you can see that the likelihood that they maintained the aspirin or clopidogrel was very much higher as the trial went by. But if they weren't called, you can see that it dropped off with both aspirin and clopidogrel. So obviously some kind of intervention of this sort is useful. So um, let's talk about the specific issue which is involving me at the moment, and that is the atrial fibrillation arena and the use of anticoagulants. Here is an area where critical dosing is extremely important. Just to remind you about the scale of the problem, 6 to 10 million people in Europe with atrial fibrillation. 6.2 billion per year in the costs of managing this condition. Up to 26% have low medication adherence for warfarin therapy. 33% discontinue warfarin during the first year. And up to 15% are discontinuing the Bigotrin. Patient monitoring behavior is poor. And there are poor patient benefits because of this. So we now, as you know, are moving away from warfarin towards the use of novel oral anticoagulants. Now these drugs are very useful. They don't need monitoring with INR, for example, but notice that they all have relatively short half-lives. So if you fail to take one dose or two doses, the anticoagulant effect has gone completely and the patient is extremely vulnerable. Now that's quite unlike warfarin, you know, which has a half-life of 50 or 60 hours. If you miss a dose of warfarin, it's not a disaster. But missing one or two doses of these drugs could be. So it's particularly important that we consider how we can get patients to adhere to the therapy and persist with the therapy. Next slide. We're doing a study at the moment in which we're comparing NOAX with inter, that's non, uh, the novel oral anticoagulants with an interactive monitoring scheme compared with NOAX without interactive monitoring. I don't have the results to show you yet, but I think that this sort of study is going to be very important. I think you will see many of these reported in the near future because dosing is so critical with these agents. So let me just summarize for you. A non adherence pro uh, problem is now very big. It's a giant problem. We have to deal with it. And there are schemes for doing that, such as the interactive monitoring scheme. It provides benefits for the physician and the patient. The physician has practical and effective support in managing the issue of adherence. It increases the awareness of patient behavior, permits appropriate and timely intervention, and supports informed day-to-day -day management. And for the patient, they have improved health due to the greater adherence to therapy. It provides reassurance that the health of the status of the patient is regularly monitored. It helps patients interact with physicians, and it encourages greater health autonomy and self-management. So that's what I have to say about the problem of non-adherence. It's a significant problem, and it's one that we all have to begin to address, particularly with powerful medications, with relatively short half-lives, with life-preserving properties. Thank you very much.